Time to get our first guest speaker up for the day, which is discussing how ag tech has improved profitability and productivity. Ollie Madgett will be sharing some personal experiences from his work in, the, in this area. Ollie has a family vineyard in McLaren Vale, and he's made the mad dash up here this morning, I think, as well, and just made it on time as well. He's the co-founder of ag tech startup Plat Farm. He also runs Adelaide ag tech meetups and is a member of the ag tech advisory board for Persa. Ollie is an ag tech mentor and has used his vineyard for tech trials, including work with the University of Adelaide and CSIRO. Please welcome Ollie Magic. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me as well. So um, I'll kind of jump straight into it. So um, thank you. As you mentioned, yeah, I'm a grape grower in McLaren Vale, Growth for Treasury. I've um, been doing it for about six years now. Um, my previous life was back in London. I used to be one of the um, founders of a game studio. So we made games for Facebook. So this was a game called I Am Player, which I produced, which let you play the life of a footballer. Uh, this was a really exciting time in games. Um, it was a moment when Facebook, um, if you remember kind of Facebook on your desktop PC and you used to play games like, um, there were like, there were farming games, there was kind of the early Candy Crush games. Like this whole space absolutely like flew for a few years um, and we, we rose the back of that. And actually just thinking about what happened kind of coming up here in those days is Facebook did something that is, was the first time I'd experienced it, which is actually quite equivalent to what's going in here. So one of um, Facebook's absolute moments of genius was when they expanded into London, they didn't really grow a team in London, but they started Facebook developer garages. So it was literally meetings like this. So everybody who wanted to make stuff to go on Facebook um, would, would be able to get in the room together. They'd put on pizza and beer and help us to understand about the platform that they were building and how we could integrate into it. And like they grew an amazing ecosystem of developers who helped them to raise the whole of Facebook up. And they did that very, very collaboratively. Um, you know, we had Zuckerberg over in London coming to present to us in the early days before he ended up turning into a douchebag that he is now. But, um, but yeah, amazing. Like back then, super, super, super supportive of us. And actually, I can see a lot of analogies of what they've done with what is going on in the, um, you know, the, this whole ag tech space at, at the moment. Um, and it is really exciting when tech, when this kind of works, and the ecosystem works, and, and you, you know, as a developer, you have somewhere that you publish your technology in and it scales. It's a really exciting place to be. And as you'll see, we're not quite there in the ag tech space quite yet, but I do believe we're on that, we're on that journey. So um, you know, with that experience that we'd had in London with the Facebook developer garages, that's what actually led us to starting our meetup group here. And that was literally just to bring these worlds together like I'm talking to you guys now. So I have had a, a, you know, a foot in the technology space in my past. Now I have a, you know, a, a, a boot in, on the ground in farming. So I've been fortunate enough to have a little bit of experience in both those worlds, but not enough developers spend time on farms. And it's really, yeah, and it, you know, those worlds don't often collide, which is why we started our meetup group. This is us over in Maitland in the Eyre Peninsula a couple of years ago. Um, we came over to see Ben at Woolly Nook Farms and a whole load of the Costa Brothers uh, and the Armand Innovation Centre. A couple of months ago, we're going to the Northern Adelaide Plains to meet the Ausveg growers next week and meet them at Paraka Market. So the group's about 2,000 people now. So yeah, ag tech meetup group. So you're welcome to be a part of it. And it's something that we're doing like um, with support from Persa to help grow this ecosystem from the ground up. Um, and you know when I was saying like, you know, the trajectory of this space and where's it, where's it at? And um, so this is actually a graph that shows the stages of when teams form, like teams go through stages and they go through these stages of like storming, for, forming, storming, performing and norming. And you can, again, I, I like sort of frameworks to help my mind make sense of a few of these things. So, and again, I can see a lot of analogies with everybody's experience in ag tech to this. So again, um, in the early days, you know, when things come together, just like the early days of ag tech, I'd say probably five, uh, from kind of three to five, six years ago, there was this real excitement about the potential of digital technology in agriculture. 
you get, and, and again, you get all this energy and there's a sudden burst of money in there and enthusiasm and, but what happens is you go through this, basically this trough, it's the storming phase. And that trough happens typically when there is often a lot of chaos. And it happens when people try to kind of own, like in agriculture, there's been various people in this journey that have tried to do a Facebook on agriculture and basically kind of own the data of agriculture. That, that thankfully hasn't w ended up working out. Um, but in, in so doing so, it's actually created an ecosystem that is often not very functional. And it's why, you know, you guys will probably have different bits of ag tech on your farms. You'll have lots of point solutions that typically work really, really well. So there'll be stuff that will serve, solve real problems for you. So it might be stuff from like green brain and soil moisture monitors. It might be certain bits of imagery that you get. It might be things that control your irrigation system. But these things that stand alone, like that don't need anything else, are, are what has been generally providing us the most value. But for an ecosystem to really work, you actually need to get things starting to like fit together. And, and I'll, I'll talk about what you know, we're starting to see, which is helping to drive, to drive that. Um, but again, because I kind of have that foot in both worlds, I wanted to share, you know, when we're startups, and like to show that actually we're kind of all in this, we are all in this together. So we are genuinely aligned, the developer community with the farming community. And I would say that pretty much this space you know, like I spent the world in things like bloody ad tech, where you're making technology just to advertise shit to people. It's the most soulless industry in the world, and it's like everybody's just in it for the money. If you meet people who are developing technology in farming, you very, very quickly see those of us that are doing this for real reasons. We're doing this because it's purposeful. So, like, um, and, and people want to create a positive outcome for agriculture, and like, this is the only goal of a startup, is basically to figure out, and you generally don't know what you're doing at the start, but you're trying to figure out what is the right thing to build. Because you can build so many things now, but it's like, what is actually the right thing to build? And the right thing to build is what actually farmers genuinely want and need and are prepared to, to pay for. And the challenge with, a, you know, from us in the startup world especially, is we're trying to figure that out before we run out of money. So unlike lots of other parts of the world, like the research, you know, the research world is amazing, but the, often they'll have a little bit more time than we do to figure stuff out. Normally we have like about six months of oxygen left before we die. So we're trying to do this super quickly. Um, and again, uh, if you, I don't know if any of you got, you know, paper and pencils in front of you, but I wanted to show you what we typically do from the startup or from the tech side um, to figure out what on earth it is that we should build and why. And it would be great if you could just take a moment um, at some point today and just to start to think about some of these things. So this is like, um, they love a canvas in the startup world. This is the value proposition canvas. But basically forget about the name of it. The important things are that on this right hand side, the idea is that you list out all your jobs, you know, the jobs to be done. So if you think, like, nobody ever wants to kind of start using technologies, technology for technology's sake. Very, very, very few people do that. Probably only 5% of the world. Most people are investing and starting to use technology because it's helping them to get a job done. So it's, it's really, really good exercise to do, just to literally just start thinking about the jobs that you have to do. So right now, as a grape grower, um, this week we've got, you know, we'll be doing, our jobs to be done are things like pest and disease monitoring that then informs, um, that's done by one person. That's got to then inform me, who then has to inform my spray contractor what to spray. And, you know, there's other things going on in my decision making about the EL stage that our vines are out and what I'm allowed to spray and what I should spray. And uh, then I'm thinking about, I have been thinking about irrigation until it, 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 it rained, and um, so I've got, I've got all these jobs, uh, and I employ technology, or I employ people to carry out those jobs. I don't go and get technology, or I don't bring people in because they're expensive, if there genuinely isn't a job to be done. So um, we, we all must hold that at our heart. And when we think about jobs, some of these jobs have ended up being super painful. So for us in McLaren Vale, 
pruning was super painful this year. I only got pruned like, God, it was like the early September when finally we got some pruners to turn up on our vineyard. Worst pruning job I've ever had done. Cost me a third more than it's ever cost me. Terrible. Uh, so that is proper, proper pain. And that's another learning from us from the ag tech ecosystem side is genuinely none of us actually want to adopt technology, the majority of us, unless there is a genuinely painful problem. So it's not just like a little kind of problem, it's when something actually hurts. So pruning hurt, I'm sure, well, when we came up and saw Ben, you were saying how, how hard it was to get the labour force here to pick um, your oranges when we were here a few months ago. I would imagine that um, fruit fly is very, very painful for you at the moment. They're the things that actually genuinely drive change and drive technology. And then we have the kind of the nicer side, which is the gains we're all looking to achieve. Often everybody just completely focuses on production gains and everybody's trying to eke out the next 5%, the next 10%. Uh, you know, in Broadacre, they're often trying to just pull out the next couple of percent. But as well as those production gains, absolutely at the heart of that is like, for me, a lot of the gains with technology that we've used on our farm have just been giving me time back. Like, when, when we first took over the vineyard, I had to go out, like, our irrigation control box was manual. I had to go out, literally, uh, every time we needed to, to do a new shift, I would go out to the box and, and have to kind of turn a dial and start things. And, like, it was an absolute killer. The best thing I've ever got for me as tech on our vineyard has been uh, uh, stuff to do with water. So it's been a Talgill, uh, it's been like a Talgill um, irrigation controller, which I think you guys have here as well, and a little app on my phone, and I can now basically um, turn my irrigation programs on, off, the fertigator, everything. I can monitor my flow rate, so I can actually see if things are not working. First couple of seasons, honestly, I'm terrible, like, because I'm quite busy sometimes. I went for like, a good month in the middle of summer with a whole bloody areas of rose not watering, which were like, and I just never really picked it up until it was too late. Na now, all of those mistakes that I had made, I'm now not making because uh, my phone helps me to see stuff. Uh, so that's, you know, that's the world. Again, we'd run out of water, you know, I'd run out of water allocation with weeks to go, and na now I can see the burn down chart. I use Swan systems as well. Um, to kind of have a whole view of everything. That's the first bit of tech I've seen in irrigation to join up what's coming from our Syntec and Green Brain Soil Moisture Monitors uh, to help actually inform the decisions that I make, and, but I still go and turn on everything via the app. But yeah, it's starting to join, it's starting to join up. And this is the job of a startup. So when, when startups do get a good understanding of what was on that right-hand side, your job's to be done, your pains and your gains, a startup then has to design a proposition that basically their product and services have to actually help you do those jobs. They've got to relieve those pains and create those gains. That's like this magic thing. And you feel it. You know, like when you do use software, and occasionally like Xero is a classic example in the, in the small business accounting world, where there is a perfect fit between um, you know, people's pains and gains and jobs and what that software does. Very few bits of ag tech are, have genuine fit, to be honest with you, just at the moment. And that, and that needs iteration. It really needs the, um, b both worlds to lean in and help to understand and exchange like what is not working. And also from us as, as growers, to not always, it's really important to help um, um, at the developer world doesn't understand what is kind of a little bit painful and what's very painful. So often, pe what, what derails people is you get this flood of information about, oh, I wish you could do this, I wish you could do this, I wish you could do this. S tons of those things are not really painful. Uh, the startup needs to find out what is genuinely painful and that you will want to, to actually pay for. Like, unless they get to the nugget of that, everything else is just window dressing. So. With feedback to startups, and you know, there's some fantastic people next door. Really try and help to um, get, if you can spare the time, help them to get to that point where you can show them if and where they're really solving proper pain. 
if they're not solving something that's genuinely painful, tell them early so that they either do something different or, you know, because like we all have, this is again what like, uh, you know, we have this bloody uh, startup founders, we have this vision. So it's, you know, they all tell you about getting this North Star and you're aiming off there. And, uh, but so you have this vision that you're going after, but obviously the, the reality in the world is, is nothing like that. And we have to kind of iterate and pivot and change our direction. And so it's a, it's a bumpy ride. A lot of the companies that are next door have survived a shed load of those pitfalls and challenges, which is why they're at a point to be you know, on the farm. And Mark's happy for them to be, be showcased to people. Tons of stuff dies um, early on. But yeah, again, even with the tech there, like they're on a journey. None of their products are finished. So um, yeah, he he help to work with them. And, you, and, and, and we need to all understand like they, they won't, nobody gets this right first time. Like nobody does. So um, that's, so that's my kind of, that's my, my hopefully a little bit of like, what's it like in the startup world? And very quickly, I just wanted to share, you know, my own journey with a little app that we made um, that started with a problem on, on, on our farm, which was painful to me. Um, so again, like most of you here in the Riverland, um, in McLaren Vale, uh, we have small, simple tractors, all under 100 horsepower, typically no technology on them. First season, this was some imagery from data farming. There's incredibly imagery out there. We've got like Deep Planet here, got series imagery here. Um, you know, Spectre, there's lots of other fixed wing people like Spectera. Like amazing imagery now. Um, this is um, from data farming for us. So this data farming imagery, like imagery on my first year used to cost like $35 a hectare or something like that. N now it's, I think this imagery is probably like $10 a hectare. Comes from space. Each pixel is about 50 centimeters, which is just like amazing progress that's happened with imagery from space in an incredibly short time. Time. So I can see, like you can see here, like I basically have a try. There's a there's a soil change here. But I didn't understand because I didn't know this vineyard when I first came on. But basically, this back triangle here needs help. Here, I basically don't need to help it anymore. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do in that first winter was to apply mulch. Uh, so woody mulch to help that struggling area. Um, expensive exercise, cost about three grand a hectare. So I, and I couldn't afford to blanket the whole vineyard. So I had to target it. So what I ended up, poor old Scott, our contractor, he just got a printout. So I had this amazing data from, um, uh, from Spectera in that first year. But like that amazing data just got printed off my printer, given to Scott. I tied up flagging tape everywhere. Scott had to try and work out what I was trying to tell him what to do as he went up to that flagging point at, or not. Off the back of that, we, um, we just developed Platform just to start uh, around something that I found quite, an I found it an annoying. It is possible, like it's not super, it's one of these things actually, Platform isn't solving a super painful problem yet. It's just solving a really annoying thing about having to tie flagging tape. But um, so we um, allow people to basically pull that imagery onto an everyday smart device, tap out where they want work doing. They can then share that, that work with somebody who's driving in a tractor. Extremely simple, and it just tells the tractor operator to start work, to stop work, or to change rate. So seems incredibly simple compared to some of the amazing stuff that people do out there in the tech world. But we are dependent on... So you know when I was saying like lots of good stuff that's amazing, it all stands alone and it works? We rely on imagery providers like data farming to give us imagery. And it's only two points in a chain. We just need to get this image from them to us. Like have we in three years been able to get that automated, frictionless, like it drives me mad. Like we still coming into the first imagery capture in November, still don't have this imagery, still behind the scenes. Every farmer that uses platform magically behind the scenes, to give you the honest truth, we're, we're pulling imagery around, pushing it on a different server. It's all being hidden, but it's not working in a really scalable way because we haven't been able to, like the, the world who provides us with imagery hasn't been able to kind of really think about the chain that they, that they sit in. 
And there is an amazing company we've met in, in the US called Leaf Agriculture, who are incredibly good at actually being developer friendly, but the imagery they create is crap. So we've got this, we've got amazing imagery from Australian startups, but they can't integrate with it. And then we've got this amazing tech from America, who don't understand vineyards, just give you an image you can't make head nor tail of. So uh, that is how hard it is on the ground. Uh, so how are, I'm going to wrap up, because I must be almost out of time, I guess. So how are we going to get to this norming phase? And this is actually where I think we are at the moment. So the norming phase is actually about like starting to get specifications that we all understand, things starting to work together. I don't know. There's a, a startup. I don't think they're going to be here because they're interstate, but they're called Pear Tree. So Pear Tree's winning loads of awards at the moment. It's a dashboard for farmers that helps lots and lots of different services that you use just literally come into one dashboard. It just does that one thing. It gets lots of different bits of information for you, sticks it onto a web page for you. Um, yeah, winning like World Ag Tech Solution because like they genuinely are helping the industry around this norming problem. So this is actually a project that we kicked off with Tim uh, probably about, eight, about a year ago now, uh, 18 months ago, to put in place the mapping standards. So we got frustrated as platform with this just not working in wine. So we're just struggling along. It's not scaling. We've been doing it for a few years. So we decided, rather than just moaning, that we'd get on with it. We'd um, basically bring everybody in the, in, in the industry together to start working through what were the most important features of a map to, what was the most important features and infrastructure of a vineyard to map and then, and then get on with doing that in an open way. So this is Ben Castine, who might be here today from Clare. So we had like Taylor's, Ben, we've got, um, we've got Hans from Penley here in the Coonawarra. So loads of different growers, Perno did, came and got involved, Wine Australia got involved. They basically helped us to decide what was important to map on our vineyards. We then, again, it's not, none of it's rocket science. It's just never been documented properly. So, you know, a vineyard is made up of a collection of blocks. Um, Blocks are a collection of vine rows, and vine rows are a collection of vines. And in a vine row, you know, we have posts ever, uh, that go, you know, typically sequentially down, down the row. And then we have these different zones. We have a mid-row zone. We have a canopy zone. We have an undervine zone. And then with the help of Wine Australia, we've then gone on another step and um, turn, made that starting to be developer friendly. So we've taken this. We've got a shared understanding of what a vineyard is from a mapping perspective. We've started to do some geeky stuff to make it developer friendly. We've published it in places like GitHub, which is where developers go to get stuff. We've worked with Airborne Logic to um, start to work out how to map vineyards in a really, really standardized way. So they can be surveyed super accurately. Um, this is us doing some trials on the vineyard as well. And once we got like super accurate vineyards in the system, this is our dream for Platform. This is what Platform would look like if it really, really worked, that we would snap you to exactly the right row you know, on your, just on your phone, it would fill in as you sprayed in the middle of the night. You'll never miss a row. You'll never miss a row when you harvest. We need that, like, we need this base stuff. We need these map, this mapping layer to be correct. So, uh, and again, all of this amazing stuff you'll start to see as growers in the industry around um, data that's captured from tractor-mounted or, or, or gator-mounted computer vision systems. Lots of it's being trialed. Some of it's really interesting. Going to... Um, once we've got the structure in place, that data can now go against the right point on a vineyard. And again, to help us with lots of different things we have to learn about sustainability-wise, about you know, how we baseline our soil carbon, for example. We need to baseline, you know, we need to distribute those soil sample points between the mid-row area and the undervine area. And we've done, now we have this map. We, we did that with Horticulture Innovation Australia. So there's like our methodology in Australia that works for all permanent alley crops. Uh, when this, you'll hear all this buzz about soil carbon. There's stuff going on behind the scenes to actually help that to be practically now useful for us as industries. And that will help us get to that performing point. What's going to drive us to performing? Like I genuinely see sustainability. Like what's making us change as growers in McLaren Vale? As soon as we've become certified under the Sustainable Wine Grape Growing Australia scheme, that actually makes you realise how, in our instance, not good we are at digital record keeping, that we need to actually produce in three years' time to be recertified, and we need that in order to keep our treasury contract. So this whole thing is pushing us to start using digital tech. We've just started to use Onside, which is something that allows us now to be compliant with our contractors, finding it super useful, um, so definitely worth checking out. Um, yeah, and lots of work being done on the mapping stage to now take that great start and take it forward so that we can provide maps as an industry 
that's useful for all of those things we need to do. And sorry for going over time, but that is, that is me. Thank You're you done, very yeah. much. Um, if you do have any questions for Ollie, you'd like to ask him. I mean, of course, he'll be around later on today. You can ask him later on as well. But any questions you might have for him, now is the time to do it. Uh, great. Yeah, great context and insight. Uh, from a startup perspective, just wondering about that shift from a point solution to a whole of ecosystem kind of solution. What, what do they need to, to make that shift? Is it these open, open source platforms uh, and data, that kind of thing? Or it, it, Again, the things that we're seeing, this worth checking out, like leaf agriculture is the best we've seen there, out there in the world so far. Like, and they've, they, they've it's, it is actually hard to think about both things, because those, like, it's been really challenging for most startups just to get their own products right, let alone think about how those products fit within the wider ecosystem. The things that we're now start seeing starting to come through actually think about the ecosystem and how they plug into it almost before they start building stuff. And it's what Leaf has done. But it is really tough to balance both. We're, again, we're, we want to do the same as platform. So we should be something that helps you to make sure you've covered all of your vineyard correctly when you're spraying it. We want to pass that data onto our spray record keeping software in our industry, but like we actually want to pass that information on, but the spray record keeping platforms in the wine industry currently completely siloed, don't let you push any data into them, and it's like, it's tough, uh, to be honest with you. But yeah, if you're a startup, just think about how you plug in from the outset. Any other questions for Ollie? Must have explained it too well. Okay, thank you. Excellent. All right, you uh, no doubt be able to catch up with Ollie later on. Keep around.